good morning again. Uh, so uh, we will continue on uh, the aspect of uh, derivation of the conti continuity momentum and the energy equation, the governing equations by means of uh, uh, another approach where you are completely working with the arbitrary shape control volume which is not fixed to any coordinate system okay and uh, this is a very interesting approach. So here uh, what we do is we consider a control mass essentially a system that means the you are considering fixed packet uh, of fluid with a given mass and tracking it uh, with respect to time. So if you assume that there is a fixed mass of fluid with a volume V at a time T and then after some time uh, T plus delta T you see the volume changes but uh, the mass content is the same and if you define any property alpha as the property per say unit volume and this property is supposed to be a function of time okay so this is this is the traditional lagrangian approach so where you just uh, the the uh, the observer travels along with the frame of reference of moving frame of reference of the uh, the packet of fluid so and then uh, therefore the property changes are all happening over time right rather than the eulerian approach where the observer is stationary the control volume is stationary and then the fluid crosses the control volume boundaries and there is a corresponding change of mass mass flux quantities of uh, this particular property okay so so that is a different frame of reference so now so this lagrangian frame of reference can be used to uh, calculate what is the rate of change of this particular property with respect to time okay so now for that we have uh, taken a small differential volume delta v corresponding to this time t and seeing how it evolves over time okay the same uh, differential volume what happens at time t plus delta t so if you overlap these two control volumes essentially you see that this delta v has probably grown to this size you know delta v at t plus delta t okay so therefore uh, what we can do is we can calculate the change delta v at t plus delta t minus delta v at t from the velocity vector basically if you take this particular uh, differential volume so this is delta v t and this entire thing is delta v t plus delta t so this change is basically the volume of this element that I have drawn here okay so therefore if this surface is actually sweeping a distance of uh, u u vector dotted with the normal okay so that much displacement is happening to that uh, the the differential surface element at time t and it is sweeping that much of distance so that should be equal to this difference change in the differential volume okay so this is nothing but your <coughs> u dot n delta t delta s right so this is this is just uh, how we are representing the uh, change in the volume if you want to calculate from the eulerian point of view what is the rate of change of this property with respect to time okay from from the control mass system so the mass does not change so you are just tracking these uh, uh, property change with respect to time so this is a total derivative okay this single total derivative okay so that you have to say suppose you have a particular value of uh, alpha for this differential volume so you will have different values of alpha for differential different uh, differential elements and you have to integrate all of them okay that will give you the total property of that particular control volume okay so and you want to calculate the rate of change of this particular property now this can be written as as your limit delta t goes to 0 you can split it up into uh, the property at t plus delta t okay minus uh, the property at time t okay so these are the uh, two integrals that you see here and uh, what I am going to do a little bit of mathematical jugglery I am just uh, adding and subtracting this particular term right here so this is uh, integral at v of t alpha t plus delta t dv so I am just subtracting and adding the same term here so now if you look at this particular term okay 
so this is nothing but you are you are keeping the integra integrand the same okay and you are changing the volume okay v at v of t plus delta t minus v at t so essentially that is like you are keeping the integrand same and you are integrating with respect to a change in the differential volume so which is nothing but this particular term right there okay so this can be combined together and we can write this as alpha t plus delta t dv where your v changes from t plus delta t to the earlier volume at t okay so that can be replaced by this particular term right here and this term that you see so in this case you are keeping the volume fixed okay so this volume is at time t and the integrand is, is changing okay from alpha t plus delta t okay minus alpha t okay so this describes uh, what is happening to the, the the change in the property from time t to t plus delta t for the same uh, control volume okay so this is nothing but the Eulerian derivative okay now what you are essentially doing is you are changing the frame of reference from a moving frame to a stationary frame okay so left hand side is the moving frame of reference where you are tracking a control mass with a fixed amount of mass and you are tracking the evolution of the property with respect to time and when you go to a stationary frame of reference so that should involve partial derivative with respect to time that is changing uh, change of property with respect to time for a fixed control volume so that is you are converting a control mass to a control volume okay plus now once you convert that to a control volume there should be some flux of this property which is crossing the control volume boundaries so that should come in terms of this so we will see how it comes okay so in the next step i'm just going to <coughs> replace this uh, particular terms right here okay so this will give me d by dt v of t alpha t dv should be equal to <coughs> limit going to 0 i am saying alpha t plus delta t and this is nothing but your change in the volume from uh, v t to v t plus delta t and that I am going to replace by u dot n vector into d t d s all right so the d t d t cancels there so this will be u dot n vector d s so you are converting the volume integral to a surface integral okay so this also will be corresponding to uh, the surface at time t okay plus the other term right here is nothing but the rate of change of this property uh, for the same volume with respect to time so this is the partial derivative integral v of t this is d alpha by dt into dv okay so is it clear ah. so why did you take the material derivative on the left hand side because this is for the control mass or the system which is which is a essentially a closed system so it doesn't allow any mass transfer so essentially the property can change only with respect to time spatial it cannot change derivative include the spatial changes sir yes but this is with the reference frame where you are moving along with the particle so if you convert that to a stationary reference frame that will have the uh, spatial derivative so that's what essentially the Reynolds transport theorem does. So it, it essentially transforms. Uh, it gives you a relationship to transform a control mass to a control volume. Okay. So if you know that, I think uh, after that, working out for a control mass will be very straightforward. Because if you write the energy conservation for control mass, you don't have things like efflux, right? Because it's impervious to mass okay so much it's much easier to write the conservation for a closed system rather than the open system and all you need to do is the link between the total derivative and the partial derivative so that you just substitute and then you will bingo finally you reach the conservation equation we have derived earlier which is for a control volume okay so 
very shortly we will see that you know but uh, this is just a routine uh, way of you know substituting you know we are looking at two two terms here one we are fixing the integrand and changing the volume okay so that is being substituted by this particular term here okay and the other we are basically fixing the volume v of t and trying to track the change with respect to time so that is the partial derivative with respect to time okay so now we can apply gauss divergence theorem you all know that the surface integral can be converted to a volume integral okay so how this can be done so this can be integrated over volume then if i apply gauss divergence theorem to this divergence divergence of this particular term that is del dot okay you have your alpha then u vector and integrated over the volume okay so therefore i am just uh, i'm just going to replace these terms in terms of uh, the divergence operator and this becomes d by dt of v alpha dv should be equal to integral so the entire right hand side is uh, having a common integral with respect to volume t so this can be d alpha by dt plus del dot alpha u vector and this is all integrated over the differential volume dv okay so this essentially is uh, the reynolds transport theorem i'll call this as 1 okay so this is the reynolds transport theorem which says that you are converting some property variation from a control system control mass which is a closed system to a control volume which is a open system so it is nothing but you are converting a total derivative writing a total derivative in terms of partial partial derivatives okay with respect to control mass it's only a function of time therefore it is one derivative single derivative and uh, with respect to the control volume you have property which is varying with respect to time and space therefore you have partial derivatives so as simple as that okay so this uh, this can also be written in a tensor notation okay so this is uh, general notation also in tensor form i think many of you have learnt tensors in your uh, incompressible flows so i am just going to use some notation here so the left hand side term stays the same alpha dv should be equal to d alpha by dt plus d by dx so i am going to use the subscript k to denote the divergence here okay so this should be again alpha u k okay in fact i can remove the vector so this itself means dv okay so this is in a tensor representation okay so this here right here means that uh, you are basically going k is equal to 1 2 3 and you are summing it up i hope all of you can remember your tensor notations okay k k equal to 1 becomes dx okay similarly here du by dx k equal to 2 becomes this dv by dy so you can keep changing this uh, particular thing with respect to uh, whatever suppose you write your x momentum so you can write your momentum in the x direction and keep this as 1 and we will see what is this alpha there similarly in the terms of uh, energy so you have to define alpha and then the index also will keep changing accordingly okay so this is your theorem we will apply this to derive the conservation principle number 1 conservation of mass okay so when you talk about conservation of mass so what should be your property alpha b hmm alpha we are defining property per unit volume so if you conservation of mass so this is mass per unit volume right so your alpha should be 
rho. So simply replace your alpha by rho. So what it essentially states, what your con conservation of mass says, if you have a closed system, there is no mass entering and mass leaving because this is a closed system. So that is the advantage of using Reynolds transport theorem. You do not have to consider any flux of mass, okay. So all you are bothered about is this total derivative. So what it says you are d by dt integral over v, your rho dv should be, this is the mass, the total mass 0, right. Because as I said this is a control mass, so the mass cannot change with time, okay. So this is 0. So now what you know is this this is the fundamental starting point for a closed system so now you also know from the reynolds transport theorem the link between the total derivative and the partial derivative okay so now you can write from a control mass to a control volume the same expression okay so that that will say that this is equal to v of t okay d rho by dt plus del dot rho u dv equal to what 0 from the Reynolds transport theorem okay. So now for this two condition to be valid the integrand has to be 0 correct. So therefore this gives you your continuity equation okay. So in a coordinate free representation. So momentum I think you can do it yourself you have to just apply the Newtonian law okay for start with the closed system apply the Newton second law for the closed system and then you can link the total derivative with respect to the partial derivatives okay. So I am going to do that for energy equation so you can probably apply the same principle for the momentum equation also. Okay, now what I am going to do uh, is for this particular case I am going to consider uh, the corresponding uh, transport uh, or maybe the, the uh, different forms of energy which are acting on this control wall right. So one component which I will combine together the body force and the viscous forces together uh, I will say that they are acting in some direction okay let me call this as some P vector okay this does not mean pressure here it has all the components of uh, viscous and pressure and body viscous body and pressure forces okay in one single uh, component I am showing all these sub components are included under that p vector okay so naturally what will be the work if you have a p vector acting on this differential volume and you have velocity vector in this direction so the work will be p dot u vector okay so the corresponding uh, displacement that is along this the particular velocity vector direction should give me the work okay so apart from that i can also have a heat transfer okay and I can just say I have some heat transfer like this Q vector okay. So now I cannot do this in any coordinate system it is arbitrary in any direction. So I am just using the vector notation and I am going to substitute there okay. So this is your heat transfer rate okay. In fact I can I can use the heat flux here right here okay q double prime vector heat flux okay so you have some internal energy for this particular system you have uh, this is a control mass so essentially what is happening you are not considering any flux of energy okay it is uh, close to mass but it allows work and energy transfer to happen therefore you are considering a component of work that is p dotted with u vector and heat transfer. 
So now we can write the first law of thermodynamics for a closed system. Okay, now first we'll define what is alpha here. You have to tell me property alpha for when you consider energy. So you have components of internal energy and kinetic energy, right? Per unit volume. Okay, so you have u plus u square. Okay, in fact, uh, I can write this as some magnitude of u vector square. Okay, so I'm just uh, expanding it in the conventional Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, just for your convenience. And uh, so, what else? Is this correct? This is per unit mass. Okay, but I need property per unit volume. Divide by density, multiply by density, right? That's it. Okay. So this is my alpha. Now I will write the conservation uh, for energy to this particular closed system, and that should give me what d by dt. I can integrate this alpha, that is rho into. So in fact, I'm going to use a coordinate-free representation here. So I'll write this as half of u vector dotted with u vector, right? That is the same u square plus v square plus w square if you write it in a Cartesian coordinate system. So I am I'm just going to write this as plus u plus half u dotted with u dv. This is my left hand side term for a control mass. I am writing the, uh, uh, the first law of thermodynamics. So that should be equal to the work okay and the contribution of work and heat okay only this this can contribute to the change of energy of this particular system i am now going to split into uh, two two components so i am saying that this p has components of viscous and pre pressure i can also have uh, components of gravity which i will say it's acting in some direction like this Okay, so therefore, this is the gravity contribution. I'm separating that from the viscous and pressure contributions. So I will write those contributions separately. So as far as the work done by the pressure for the 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 pressure and the viscous forces are concerned, so it should be U dotted with P, and they are acting on the surfaces. So it should be integrated over the surface. So this is uh, one con contribution. The other is coming from the gravity. So that is U dotted with rho g and this is a body force right this is acting on the entire volume so this should be a volumetric integral so what is the final contribution so you have the work and energy heat okay so the heat will be q dotted with the normal and once again it is a surface integral right now what should be the magnitude of this should it be what should what should be the sign of this plus or minus okay so in fact i should uh, give it correct representation here so in in my thermodynamic definition the heat transfer to a system is positive therefore i'll note denote that my heat flux is actually entering this particular so therefore q dotted with n will be negative so i have to put a negative sign here to make sure that this convention is the positive heat transfer all right so according to this this is opposite to the normal okay so this is the positive definition of heat that is added to a system and this has to be negative so that's it so once you have written this for this particular control volume control mass so okay so this is for a control mass okay this is the first law for closed system all of you agree there are no flux terms so this is very straightforward to write than for an open system now you know directly the reynolds transport theorem which links the closed uh, system to a control volume so just replace the left hand side with the partial derivative terms okay and therefore you will finally have your uh, conservation of energy for an open open system okay so if you do that so i'll just erase this so
So this will on the left hand side I am going to replace that with the Reynolds transport theorem formulation I have V d by dt of uh, this particular rho into u plus half u dot u okay the entire thing okay anyway plus I have uh, I can use the tensor uh, notation rather than using the divergence notation here d by dx k so I am going to use this particular notation into rho u plus half u dotted with u okay multiplied by what u k okay the entire uh, term d v okay so I am replacing this uh, control mass derivative with a control volume derivative that should be equal to d by dx k uh, okay so this should be just as it is integral s u dot p ds plus integral u dot rho g dv minus integral q dot n ds okay where my p vector here is nothing but the viscous stresses okay so that is sigma ij into n vector okay so this is my compact notation for for these viscous forces which are acting on this particular control volume so is it clear so only the left hand side I am writing in terms of the Reynolds transport theorem control volume derivatives so now you can apply the gauss divergence theorem you can also express this and this and write this in terms of volume derivatives okay so therefore I can say my integral u dot p ds will become integral d by dx i u j sigma i j dv and integral q dot n ds will be integral over volume del q j by del x j into dv okay so you please understand the tensor notation here so in this case you simply say dqx by dx plus dqy by dy plus dqz by dz okay here this is the this is a tensor okay sigma this is a stress tensor okay you have all the nine components so you have to go one by one so you start with uh, say i equal to 1 j equal to 1 and then i equal to 1 j equal to 2 so and you keep expanding this okay so this is a very compact way of uh, writing all those terms okay you can go back and check with your Cartesian coordinate system okay whether this makes sense okay so I am just going to write this in terms of volume derivatives <coughs> and therefore if I uh, put them together I can say the integrand should be 0 because I can collect all the terms which, which have volume integral okay on the left hand side and that will be equal to 0 and therefore the integrand has to be 0 therefore the integrand becomes d by dt of uh, my rho u plus half uj uj so which is the compact notation again uh, plus d by dx k rho u plus half uj uj uk okay so now you see if you are going from uh, k equal to 1 2 3 so you are adding all the spatial derivative terms with respect to x y and z in Cartesian coordinate system okay and for each of this you are you are saying this is uh, u square plus v square plus w square so you have two two notation notations here one for j one for k they are independent 
okay so this j will go within within the k k loop all right so then you have to expand that for the different coordinate systems k equal to 1 2 and 3 so on the right hand side you have uj uh, okay so this should be d by dxi into uj sigma ij plus uj into rho gj this is the body force term minus uh, <coughs> you have dqj by dxj all right so this is uh, your energy equation now this has to be closed and one more thing uh, we can do is this has all these uh, complex terms which we can probably simplify once again we can write the mechanical energy equation in a tensorial form and we can subtract that from this okay so the mechanical energy equation if you multiply your momentum equation by the velocity terms okay and sum all the three momentum equations so your mechanical energy equation in the tensorial form can be written as d by dt rho uj uj by 2 okay this is like rho u square plus v square plus w square by 2 okay that is e plus you have d by dxk rho uj uj by 2 uk so what you are doing is you are multiplying uh, with uj so that is for x momentum you have multiplication with u y momentum v and z momentum w and this k is basically your spatial derivative the divergence operator essentially so you have u du by dx plus v du by dy so that that is taken care by this k so that k is different from this j okay uh, that that is that is equal to uj d sigma ij by dxi plus rho uj dj so for a particular momentum x momentum you will have gravity in the x direction y direction and so on okay so this also is the stress tensor uh, j here indicates the direction along which uh, that stress is acting so in the x direction you will have uh, sigma xx and uh, you know, tau ix and so on hmm? and this is the since it is a tensor it has to be the gradient in that particular direction okay so for x direction you have d sigma xx by dx the y direction you have d tau ix by dy and so on okay so that is the compact way of representing that all those terms in the Cartesian system so now if you subtract let us call this as number we always already use number one no okay somewhere we used before I think but let me redefine as number one and this is two and subtracting two from one so I will be left with uh, an equation for only the internal energy so subtracting 2 from 1 I can say that uh, I will get an equation like d by dt rho u plus d by dxk so these two terms get cancelled off I will get another term here rho u uk on the right hand side I will have sigma ij because if you expand this this is sigma ij into duj by dxi plus uj into d sigma ij by dxi so uj into d sigma ij and this this when you subtract they are gone okay so you will have sigma ij into duj by what dxi and uh, the body force term gets cancelled off directly then you will have minus dqj by dxj all right so what i'm going to do i'm writing this term in terms of total derivative again which you are which you know is du by dt and you know for incompressible fluid now i'm going to bring in the uh, relationship between the stress and strain rate so i can say sigma ij 
equal to minus p so i am going to write this in terms of the tensorial notation and you will see that this is a very compact you don't have to write this for each and every component by dx j plus du j by dx i does it make sense where delta is your Kronecker delta so delta i j will be equal to 1 if i equal to j equal to 0 if i is not equal to j right so what it means only for your normal stresses you have minus p the pressure forces come to balance the normal stresses whereas the tangential stresses do not have the pressure force to balance that so there they will disappear because this is your delta function okay so wherever you have normal for normal stresses only there the pressure stresses will be there otherwise it is 0 and this is a common representation okay so this will be say du by dy if you so suppose you have i equal to 1 j equal to 1 then this will be du by dx plus du by dx that is twice du by dx okay if you are writing your tangential stresses so i equal to say 1 j equal to 2 so this will be du by dy plus dv by dx which are the components under shear stresses okay so depending on the particular index i and j this can be written for all the components normal component or tangential components so very compact notation okay for those of you who have uh, probably not known any of you not heard of uh, tensorial notation okay so i think you may have to brush through any basic fluid mechanics book maybe usually in the appendix there is something on tensorial notation or you can just quickly read through tensors it is i mean it is very common sense you can see that from yourself you do not have to expand that you can substitute if it is two dimension i and j can maximum go to two if it is three dimension so you can just expand it in that manner and if you represent something like this that means this is a summation operation you do not just stop like this you have to expand it okay for different values of j and i that is what it means okay so therefore now if I substitute this you see how easy it reduces to the final form in the tensorial notation so this gives me rho du by dt okay so <coughs> this will be I am substituting for sigma ij in terms of this so minus p into du k or du j by uh, dx j plus d by dx j of so I am also using the Fourier's uh, heat conduction law for Q and I am writing this in terms of the temperature gradient dx j okay plus uh, you will have some other terms which form the viscous uh, dissipation right here. in fact this will be 0 by continuity right so what I am doing is I am clubbing all the pressure terms so if you write this this is P delta ij and this will be 1 only if i equal to j therefore if your j and i are equal only that term will be there and when they are equal that is nothing but the continuity equation for incompressible flow okay so that will automatically be satisfied therefore you will have your total derivative that is equal to your uh, your Laplacian operator right here plus your viscous dissipation term and for incompressible uh, uh, flows so this phi what I have written here you can see that for yourself will be new dui by dxj plus duj by dxi times what fill in the blanks what what will be the multiplication factor here so I am just substituting this into this particular term okay the pressure term I have cancelled it duj by dxi right okay now you can go back and check for your Cartesian system whether you will get all those terms you know 
you can start with say du i equal to 1 j equal to 1 and you will get 2 du by dx into du by dx so that will be 2 du by dx the whole square 2 new du by dx the whole square and if you have plus then you have to expand in uh, y z direction so you have other uh, d, dv by dy plus dv by dy the whole square plus uh, dw by dz the whole square plus now if you go to i equal to 1 j equal to 2 then you will get your other terms du by dy plus dv by dx now this again has to be expanded for different values of j so again if you if you if you do that you will get dv by dx plus du by dy the whole square okay which you have uh, derived in the cartesian coordinate system so this is a very very compact notation all right so so now therefore that that is your final uh, energy equation which you have uh, you can write down in a coordinate free representation okay for a control volume so this is finally for a control volume okay so therefore I think uh, this gives you a pretty good idea how the Reynolds analogy can be applied to derive the conservation equation so all the Reynolds analogy says is uh, you can transform your uh, a variation with respect to a control mass to a control volume okay and uh, you have to write down the uh, conservation laws for a control mass which is much simpler and then you apply that relationship and then you write the final equation for a control volume okay and this is a completely coordinate free representation so any questions so what you have to do is go home and then check once uh, whether all these tensor notations make sense to you and if you have any questions you can ask me okay so it takes some time for you to uh, you know understand this completely but it is not that difficult either okay so working with tensors you do not make any mistake so that is another advantage and finally it is up to you to expand that in, in what, whatever coordinate system that you are working okay so very quickly what I am going to do is uh, another 5 minutes uh, I am going to go over to the second law of thermodynamics because uh, we have derived all our required conservation equations applying the first law uh, for energy uh, but uh, we have to see something about more important fact which is entropy generation okay when you have heat transfer you have some kind of entropy generation inside the system as well so the heat heat transfer results in some internal irreversibility and we will see uh, how this internal irreversibility can be characterized okay very very briefly okay I am not going to go into too much of detail <coughs> okay so I am just uh, talking about the second law aspects now okay so I am uh, talking about irreversibilities and entropy generation uh, and you all know we can start with uh, the Clausius inequality you know which uh, relates your change in entropy to the amount of heat transferred what it says if you have a perfectly reversible process so your ds is equal to this is your perfectly reversible process okay if you had differential amount of heat so you can relate your change in entropy directly with this particular relationship okay, you can calculate the change in entropy if you integrate this particular equation okay now if you have some internal irreversibility what it says is your ds is greater than or equal to this so usually for internal it should be greater than this so we can also say or otherwise ds is equal to this plus some entropy which is generated inside the system due to irreversibilities you know these irreversibilities could be one of them could be from the viscous dissipation okay in the energy equation you have a contribution of viscous dissipation right so what it says even if you do not transfer heat that viscous dissipation is sufficient to increase the energy of the system that means part of the kinetic energy is converted into into energy into internal energy of the system okay so that can cause additional irreversibilities apart from that your conduction or heat diffusion itself will generate some internal irreversibilities okay so we will 
now try to estimate okay what is the contribution of uh, the heat transfer and your viscous dissipation to the generation of heat uh, entropy okay that is a very very important thing because it is not just uh, enough to understand the conservation law we should also understand and characterize what is the contribution of these components to your entropy generation in a system okay therefore we will just uh, quickly expand this for a closed system we can write this in a rate form as ds by dt is greater than or equal to 1 by t dq by dt okay this is nothing but the heat transfer rate okay so you can call this as q dot or whatever heat transfer rate So for an open system okay, so what I am going to do is uh, I will express this total derivative, this is for a closed system, I can use the Reynolds transport theorem which I have, expand the total derivative in terms of the partial derivatives, I can say that this is my total entropy now if I define an entropy per unit volume as a property so I can write this as rho into s so this is the entropy per unit mass here I am sorry okay so this is my this is your entropy specific entropy so therefore the alpha which is entropy per unit volume will be rho times s and uh, integrated over the different entire volume plus what is the second term okay so this is your s into uh, so this is rho s times so this 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 will be the uh, velocity component okay which will make your uh, uh, derivative here v dot n ds this is integrated over the control surface this should be greater than or equal to if you integrate this again over the control surface because your heat transferred is transferred across the control volume boundaries okay dq by dt okay ds all right so this is your uh, equation for conservation of uh, entropy so this is your entropy conservation equation you can say for an open system all right so it is just like your energy conservation you can write something in terms of uh, entropy flux okay and your rate of change of entropy with respect to time and that should be greater than equal to your heat transfer which is happening divided by time uh, the temperature sorry so what we will do now uh, is that we will expand this particular term on the right hand side okay so we will apply gas divergence theorem for this term as well as this right hand side term and we can expand that term a little bit okay so if you write in terms of the gas divergence theorem so what I am going to do is that uh, so this difference ideally if you do not have any internal irreversibilities this left hand side minus the right hand side term should be 0 right if that is greater than 0 that means you have some internal irreversibility so what I am going to say your internal irreversibility s dot gen is equal to this minus this okay so which is nothing but your rho ds by dt okay so I am just writing this in terms of uh, the total derivative plus I am going to expand this particular term I will write that using Gauss divergence theorem as del dot 1 by t this can be written as del dot 1 by t del q by dt for the entire control volume all right so this can be uh, expressed as 1 by t I can write this as del dot q double prime now the del q by del t is nothing but the heat flux primarily so this can be written as del dot q I can take 1 by t out minus I can take 1 by t square q double prime dot del t okay I am just splitting this derivative I am just expanding I am just saying this is 
uh, 1 by t if I take out this is del dot q double prime minus if I take q double prime out so this is 1 by t square q double prime dot del t I am just expanding and rewriting this so this is my final expression which says that my generation term has something like a total derivative plus this plus this so if, uh, if you ideally balance all these terms together you can calculate your irreversibilities internally okay so we will stop here and tomorrow uh, we will continue and show what are the final expressions for the contribution to internal irreversibilities.